Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 43. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our traction control and our Link G4X systems. Now, our traction control is going to be a feature that we found in the G4 Plus systems. It's going to be enhanced and revised now for the G4X. We're going to be integrating the traction control using our wheel speed sensors and measuring our percentage slip between driven and undriven wheels. We're going to be tying in the traction control to something new called torque management. It's going to be something that we have to program in order for the traction control to work right. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our traction control in our PID closed loop format, looking at our torque management, getting familiar with that, and making sure that the link understands what kind of torque the engine's making so it can properly detune the engine when we're activating the traction control and it's going to be performing how we'd expect. We're also going to be taking a look at some strategies with the traction controls and different ways we can implement it and how we can work with the traction control in conjunction with our launch control on a drag vehicle so that we can tie them together and we're not going to find that they're going to fight each other and have any kind of issues. There's going to be a lot to cover in this video, so let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our traction control feature in our PC Link software. Our traction control is going to allow us to measure the difference between our driven and undriven wheel speeds, and once we have too much slip, that's going to be indicating that we're having a loss of traction, we can take action. We can go in pull ignition timing out, we can cut ignition timing, we cut fuel injector pulse width, um, we can go in and close electric drive-by-wire throttle, we also can reduce boost. We can go about this in a variety of different ways, so we're going to be taking a look at how I suggest that you work with the traction control that's most effective for most all situations. We're also going to be taking a look at integrating the traction control in with the launch control. If you're in a drag application, it's going to be very specific, some things that we absolutely need to consider and know. So let's take a look at this right now. We're going to go here into layout, move under layout here, and go all the way down under TC. That's our page dedicated for traction control. Now within this page here, we're going to find a whole bunch of things on screen. Let's talk about this first. We're going to find we have our traction control tab that's going to allow us to turn on the feature and program some of the functionality. We're gonna find our parameters list and our time plot here. This is all set up to take a look at the specific data that we need in order to set up our traction control. We're going to have two different tables associated with this slip that we can measure. We have our slip table one and slip table two. So we actually have a way we can toggle between these two tables if we'd like. We could use a toggle switch. We could um, go in and have one table here dedicated to a rotary trim pot versus an acceptable amount of slip per gear. There's a multitude of different ways we can set this up. We'll be talking about some of the more effective ways that I find to work with traction control here in this video. Then we're also gonna be taking a look at something called torque management. Now this is something new for the G4X system. It's gonna allow us to be very specific of how we wanna reduce the engine's torque reduction in relation to the throttle angle and to the spark timing and to ignition cut um, and to boost control. So there's gonna be some factors in here that we have to program that are gonna be tying together into the traction control. So both have to actually be set up here to work. So the very first thing we need to know for traction control is going to be we have to set up our wheel speed sensors. We have dedicated videos for that here in the training course library. If you're coming into the traction control video, jump back into the video taking a look at setup speed and gear. We have a, the tutorials showing and talking about how to calculate that. I have an Excel spreadsheet calculator in the course packet that'll allow you to enter in your tire information and your wheel size to calculate some of those parameters that we have to program so that we're having our wheel speeds report it correctly. So at minimum to make the traction control work, we're going to have to have one driven wheel speed sensor and one un undriven wheel speed sensor. So if it's a front wheel drive car, we'll have one front wheel speed sensor and or transmission speed, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to have a ground speed or undriven speed, which would be a rear wheel speed. Now we could take all four wheel speed sensors and wire them into our link box, that would be ideal, but we don't have to have all of them to work in a straight line acceleration type uh, traction control with the measured slip. And when we know what the wheel speeds are going to be, as I mentioned here a few minutes ago, we're going to be able to calculate the amount of slip between the wheels. And the amount of slip is going to be if we have, let's say our front wheels are spinning at 60 miles per hour and our back wheels are spinning at something like 50 miles per hour, we know that we're going to have, and it's a front wheel drive car, so we have our driven versus undriven speeds, we're gonna have a relatively large percentage of difference between our wheel speeds. Now what we need to do in order to get that under control, in order to gain traction so that our wheel speeds are staying very close to each other so that we're gaining maximum acceleration, we need to reduce some of the engine's torque and power production so we can accomplish that again in a variety of different ways, which we'll talk about here. So the concept of what we're doing here is actually relatively simple. We have to have our wheel speed sensors wired in, they have to be calibrated. Then we can compare the difference between them and set a percentage of slip that's gonna be allowed and then we can go in and start to take action if we over overstep that amount of slip that we're specifying. So let's in, go and turn on our traction control right now 
and start to take a look at this. So if we go here under traction control, we're gonna go into our traction control mode and we're gonna click on. So we have off, on, or disable. In this case, we wanna go here and click it on. And then we'll say yes here. It's gonna initialize um, our table. So let's go and start to talk about some of our parameters here we have to program. Now under traction disable switch, this is gonna allow you to turn off the traction control. Um, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.